The antigens of tumor cells may differ from the antigens of normal cells. Thus, tumor cells can be recognized by molecules and cells of the immune system. In the treatment of cancer with immunotherapy, specific molecules of the immune system are used to recognize, inactivate, or kill cancer cells. Overexpressed and overactivated receptors are found on the membrane surface of the cells of many tumors, so, immunotherapy often targets these receptors. To this end, several antibodies have been developed that not only recognize and bind, but also inactivate these receptors. The antibody Cetuximab, registered trade name Herbitux, is a prominent example of an antibody that targets EGF receptors. Cetuximab binds to an antigenic site within the extracellular domain of the EGF receptor, ERB-B1, and inhibits the binding of its ligand, EGF. Thus, the presence of cetuximab prevents the formation of both the ERB-B1 receptor homodimer and the heterodimer with ERB-B2. Cetuximab is used in the treatment of colon cancer as well as cancers of the head and neck. The antibody panitumumab, registered trademark Vectibix, binds to an antigenic site within the extracellular domain of the EGF receptor ERB-B1 and inhibits the activation of the receptor after binding of the ligand and heterodimerization. Thus, in the presence of panitumumab, the receptor does not phosphorylate the intracellular tyrosine residues. The sensitivity to cetuximab and panitumumab correlates negatively with the number of EGF receptor proteins in the cell membrane. In other words, cells with an overexpression of the EGF receptor gene are resistant to these drugs. In addition, mutations downstream of the EGF receptor lead to resistance to panitumumab. This is why panitumumab is used only in the treatment of colon tumors without mutations in the proto-oncogene RAS. The antibody pertuzumab, registered commercially as Omnitarg, binds to an antigenic site within the extracellular domain of the EGF receptor ERB-B2 and inhibits its heterodimerization with all other members of the EGF receptor family. The two monomers can no longer dimerize, regardless of whether a ligand, such as EGF, is present or not. Pertuzumab is active in tumor cells irrespective of the expression level of ERB-B2. Trastuzumab, registered trade name Herceptin, is the best characterized antibody used in cancer immunotherapy. It binds to an antigenic site within the extracellular domain of the receptor ERB-B2 and inhibits the activation of the receptor, independently of ligand binding and heterodimerization. Thus, in the presence of trastuzumab, the receptor does not phosphorylate the intracellular tyrosine residues. Trastuzumab is indicated for the treatment of breast and stomach tumors with increased ERB-B2 expression. The antibody is also effective in patients whose tumors show ERB-B2 gene amplification but do not show ERB-B2 overexpression in immunohistochemistry. This could be the result of tumor cells shedding the ERB-B2 protein, which would in turn result in a lower immunohistochemical signal. In addition to membrane-bound receptors, other membrane antigens are also used as targets for therapeutic antibodies. Rituximab, also known under the trade names Rituxin and Mabthera, is the most prominent example of an antibody that targets a membrane antigen. This antibody binds to the B-cell-specific antigen CD20, which is involved in the regulation of B-cell proliferation. CD20, engaged by rituximab, can generate transmembrane signals capable of directly controlling cell growth and even of triggering cell death in certain tumors. Rituximab was developed in the 1990s as the first antibody for cancer treatment. It is used in the therapy of B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma, 
NHL. In addition to rituximab, several other anti-cancer antibodies targeting membrane-bound antigens have been developed. These include zanolimumab, commercially registered as Humax CD4. Zanolimumab, which is directed at the T-cell-specific antigen CD4, is used to treat T-cell lymphoma. Gemtuzumab, trade name Myelotarg, binds to the myeloid antigen CD33 and is used to treat acute myeloid leukemia. As previously mentioned, antibodies themselves can be used as drugs to treat tumor cells. A further development is functional antibodies, which couple to distinct components that affect the tumor cells. Thus, antibodies not only bind to the tumor antigen and recognize the tumor cell, they also serve as transporters of drugs or components that affect the cell. One example is the functional antibody tocitumomab, registered trademark Bexar. Tocitumomab binds to the antigen CD20 on B cells and is covalently bound to the radioactive isotope iodine-131. This radionuclide emits beta and gamma radiation, which may kill the cell. Tocitumomab is used in the treatment of relapsed or chemotherapy refractory follicular lymphoma. Another example of a functional antibody is the immunotoxin anti-CD22. This antibody is coupled to a toxic bacterial peptide called Pseudomonas exotoxin. Anti-CD22 binds to the antigen CD22, which is present on the surface of normal B cells and B cell tumors. After binding, the receptor antibody complex is endocytosed and directed to lysosomes in the cell. The low pH in the lysosome activates the toxin. The activated toxin binds to ribosomes and blocks protein synthesis. This irreversible block leads to cell death. In addition to antibodies that target membrane-bound receptors and proteins, there is a highly effective antibody that inhibits tumor growth indirectly by binding to an extracellular growth factor. This antibody is called Bevacizumab, trade name Avastin. It binds the vascular endothelial growth factor A, or VEGFA. Via its cell membrane receptor, VEGFR2, free VEGFA induces the outgrowth of new blood vessels from existing blood vessels, a process known as angiogenesis. In the presence of bevacizumab, the binding of VEGF to its receptor is blocked. As a consequence, VEGF is unable to stimulate blood vessel formation because a growing tumor depends on new blood vessels for the supply of oxygen and nutrients, bevacizumab inhibits tumor growth.